Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. My name is Kenta. And for today's webinar, we'll be going over the DPF 300 manual depaneling table. So what is depaneling? Depaneling is the process of uh, cutting out or separating the tabs which connect uh, the PCBs to an entire panel or multi-block. Here's an example. This is a dummy board that I have here. This is the panel, this is the PCB or circuit board. The process of depaneling is to cut out the uh, tabs which are connecting the circuit boards onto the panel and onto uh, the individual circuit boards and to uh, separate them. So that's the process of depaneling. And for the depaneling process, you can use um, several different tools you can use. You can use a manual uh, depaneling tool, hand tool. There's also pneumatic hand tools. There's also uh, guillotines. There's also a pizza cutter types for V-score type of uh, uh, panels. Um, there's also hook types that come down and uh, break away on the tabs themselves. And you also have on the higher end, you also have a routing machine type or laser machines. Um, but today, for t so those are different types of depaneling tables. Um, the DPF 300 that I have here is, uh, is another type of depaneling system that we're gonna be going over today. Okay, um, so the 300 is in front of me. I know you, could, you guys can only get a uh, top view of the table uh, from the camera. So let's go ahead and put up a slide of what the, uh, the full view of the DPF 300 looks like. Uh, it's what you guys see on the slide right there. And uh, on the slide, there's also a spec sheet of the basic specs of the uh, DPF 300. You guys can uh, go over and review that on your, uh, on your own time separately. Uh, but for today's uh, webinar, I want to focus in on some of the main features of the DPF 300. And those features have to do with the performance, the safety, and the price point of the DPF 300. So let's start off with going over the performance. The performance, um, the DPF 300, it's an all electric system, right? So it uses an electric spindle to power the uh, milling bits. Uh, that's how you're able to get the performance of the, uh, the high quality cuts that you expect and get from a high-end routing machine. So with the electric spindle, rotates at 24,000 RPMs, creates that nice clean cut uh, off of the tabs. And with the electric spindle, uh, reduction in vibration and also reduction in the, uh, the noise being produced by the system went down from 90 decibels down to 80 decibels and uh, it may not seem like a lot but 80 decibel um, it's about the sound that your um, like your kitchen garbage disposal that's about 80 decibels so it's not that loud um, so that's performance you get that nice clean cut by using the electric spindle and a reduction in noise um, by making it an electric spindle um, the other performance aspect of it is also related to safety it, it's uh, if you take a look at the slide, you'll see uh, interchangeable guides um, on that slide. Those guides are actually designed in a unique way um, that it protects the operator from accidentally coming into contact with the milling bits. Okay, and there's also a vacuum pipe and two attached to the back end of the guides. So that's also safety because what it's doing is it's evacuating all of the PCB dust directly at the source of the cut. The tube and the pipe is connected down below to a powerful vacuum pump, and that's what's collecting all of the PCB dust directly at the source. So again, the performance, nice clean cut, and safety, protecting the operator from accidentally coming into contact with the milling bits and evacuating all of the PCB dust directly at the source. Those interchangeable guides, that's another key feature of the DPF 300. Now, the other main feature of the DPF 300 is that uh, it's also a manual system, so the spindle stays in place, the milling bit stays in place, and you're actually running the, uh, the operator is running the uh, panels manually. So what that means is that there's no programming required. There's no special fixturing or tooling uh, required when you're depaneling the boards. Uh, no programming required, um, easy, really easy to use, anyone can use it. And what that also means is that I can go from board A, to board B, to board C, in a matter of minutes. All you have to do is select the proper size interchangeable guides and bits, set it up onto your DPF 300, and you're ready to go. So for example, I can go from board A 
run a batch of 50 in board A, and then go to board B, do 25 of board B, and then do 75 of board C, and then I could even go back to board A and do another 50 run of those uh, with very little uh, setup time, minimal setup time, minimal downtime. So it's, again, no programming required, no tooling required. It's great. It's a universal system, I call it, and it's great for uh, manufacturers, contract manufacturers, prototype houses, R&D houses that have to deal with uh, hundreds or thousands of different sizes and different types of boards and smaller batches. So it's uh, high mix, low volume types of applications. This machine is great for you guys. Now, uh, the other part, portion of it is that it's uh, the price point, right? You get the high quality cut at a fraction of the cost of what a high end routing machine um, is being offered at because we're keeping the spindle stationary and the operator is manually running the panels across the spindle. So that's another key factor is the price point. We're able to offer this at a fraction of the cost of what a high-end routing machine is being offered at. Okay, so those are the main features uh, of the DPS 300. Let's get into a little bit more detail about the interchangeable guides that I just talked to you about because that's the main feature of one of the main features of the 300. So um, before we start using the 300, the first thing you want to do is to measure out, you need to measure out the tab width using a caliper and grabbing your panel with your PCBs still attached, right? So you go ahead and grab your calipers and you're going to measure out the distance or the width of your tabs. Right now it's measuring two millimeters. You guys can see that. And we'll put up a, a different slide to just to give you a better visual of what I was doing there. Um, so you see that the circuit board is attached to the panel with tabs. And what I'm doing is I'm measuring out the, uh, the slot width, or I call it the tab width. Um, and in my case, I, I measured two millimeters. So in this instance, I'm gonna be using a two millimeter guide with a matching set of two millimeter bits. And in reality, I can actually go down one step lower, 1.9 guide with a 1.9 bit. And for the standard guides and bit selection for the 300, I, we have available 1.5 millimeters all the way up to 2.5 millimeters, okay? And the uh, maximum thickness that you can cut with the standard guide is up to four millimeters. And the minimum distance required from the edge of your, uh, from the edge of your board to the component is 0.8 millimeters. So those are some of the basic uh, distances that you'll need to know. Um, but once you have your guide and bit selected, uh, the next thing is to just install them onto your 300 because the DPS 300 doesn't come with guides and bits um, included with the table itself. We leave that up to the customer to select on your own, okay? But what the 300 does come with is it does come with tools necessary for the installation. So once you have your guide and bit selected, I'm going to have to use some of the tools that the table comes with. Now these are replacement vacuum hoses and pipes. Uh, just extra replacement parts to get you guys going. I'm going to put this aside really quick because we're not going to be needing that right now. And these are the tools you'll need to install the guides and bits. A couple of wrenches and a couple of uh, hex keys. First thing you need to do is to just grab your uh, milling bit and install it insert it into your uh, the spindle grab your wrenches one holds on to the bottom and using the other wrench just tighten down the spindle once that is tightened down the next thing you want to do is to um, install the mounting headpiece that's this guy right here now the headpiece does have a location. Look, they have location pins on the table itself. One here, one there, and also holes on the mounting headpiece itself. There's also a uh, indication marker on the headpiece that should match up with the marker on the table itself to uh, ensure that you're installing it in the proper direction. So just go ahead and slide that over on top. And there are a couple of hex screws that you'll need to tighten down using the three millimeter hex key that comes with the table. So just go ahead and uh, 
tighten those down. One on one side, make sure that's tight. And one on the other. Make sure that's tight also. Once you have that in place, the next step is to install the, uh, these interchangeable guides. Now the guides do have a direction. The guides also have a opening of, on the back end. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, I understand. Uh, but they do have an opening. Okay, so just make sure the opening matches up to the vacuum pipe. because That's where the pipe is going to be inserted. And uh, place that over your mounting headpiece and over your uh, milling bit. And use the other set of uh, hex screws. And now go ahead and take the uh, two millimeter hex key and tighten down those uh, hex screws. Again, one on one side and one on the other side. Okay, and we're almost done here. The, the last thing you need to do is just insert the vacuum pipe into the back end of the guides. There you go. And for this, you just want to make sure that the vacuum pipe sits nice and uh, flush to the back end of these uh, interchangeable guides. And uh, that's, that's all it takes for the installation process for the guides and bits. Um, really easy. It takes five minutes or less. Uh, so like I said, it's very little setup time, uh, very little downtime when you have to go from uh, one board to another. Okay. So now we're actually, uh, we're actually ready to de-panel, uh, which is the fun part. So let's go ahead and uh, show you guys. But before we get started, uh, safety. So put on safety goggles. And the table comes with a ESD wrist strap included. Um, I know this is a dummy board, so I really don't need to uh, use it, but good practice. So I go ahead and attach my wrist strap, grab my board. And let's take a look at the uh, front control panel here. This is the control panel main power turn it on you see that the light goes on and this will be on and off button emergency stop button and this is your esd wrist strap connection point um, just mentioned the tabletop is esd safe esd safe tabletop but um, again this is an extra esd connection point for your wrist strap and now that we're ready to depanel uh, let's go ahead and turn the machine on, but once I turn the machine on, you also see there's a lamp on the upper left-hand corner of the table. This lamp is going to turn on. That's to notify your surrounding that the table is running and in operation. Once, the table uh, once I press off, that lamp goes off. Cool. So let me go ahead and turn it on. That lamp goes on. Now I'm ready to depanel. So here we go. Let's see this. And as I'm depaneling, if the operator were to accidentally come into contact with the guide or the milling bit, I'm protected. That's another feature. That's the feature I was talking about with the interchangeable guides. Now, don't go intentionally trying to touch it, but I'm just pointing out the fact that if you were to accidentally come into contact, it is safe to do so. So let me finish up. Be paneling this demo board that I have here. And here we go. Circuit board is depaneled. Once you're done with the depaneling process, just simply turn off the power. And you can see from the working surface area, no PCB dust left around. I can touch it. You can see that my hands are very clean. There's no PCB dust. Um, but after a long eight hour shift, if you do find any PC remaining PCB dust or if there's any other kind of uh, debris on your table in general, you can, uh, there's also an external vacuum hose that you can use to pick up any remaining debris. 
just uh, open up the valve and turn the unit back on. And you can use it as a vacuum. When you're done, just close the valve, turn the unit off, put the hose back in its place, kill the main power switch, and you're ready to go home for the day. Um, so that's how, that's how easy it is to use the DPF 300. It's really easy to use. Like I said, the performance is there. You saw how clean the cuts were. You get the same type of high quality cut that you would get from a high end routing machine. Um, with, and with the use of those interchangeable guides, it's providing safety for the operator, protecting from accidentally coming into contact with the milling bits. The vac powerful vacuum pump is evacuating all the PCB dust directly at the source. We're using an electric spindle now, so less vibration, less noise, less maintenance. You don't have to pipe in air source directly to your table. You could actually move it around now anywhere in your facility because the table does have uh, rolling caster feet, so you can pick it up and move it to uh, a new location if you have to do so. Um, again, uh, another key point is that no programming required to depanel this board. I didn't have to program anything. No extra tooling is required. Another key point, and the price point, um, we're able to offer this table at a fraction of the cost of what a high-end routing machine is offered at. Um, so yeah, that's it. I hope I was able to clarify or give you more information on what the DPF 300 is able to offer everyone. Again, it's great for contract manufacturers, prototype houses, R&D houses that have to do with thousands, uh, hundreds of boards with different sizes and types of circuit boards and that need to run um, and smaller batches, uh, again, high mix, low volume types of applications. Now for additional information on the DPF 300 itself, um, if you need more information, please visit HakoUSA.com for additional information. Now, thank you guys for always watching. Hope you guys found this helpful and we'll see you next time. And remember, keep your eye on Hako.